Today I am breaking down my updated 7-step process that transforms basic 3D renders into professional photorealistic ones, from modeling and lighting to materials and imperfections. This is a process that can be applied to any render engine. I'm also partnering with Real World to show you their scan textures. So let's start with the first step, references. To develop your aesthetic sense, you need to make reference analysis a daily habit. Look at real interior photos on Instagram, Arch Daily, and architecture photographers. Actual photos, not 3D renders. When you find images you like, save them and ask yourself why you like them. Maybe it's the materials, the dramatic light-shadow contrast, or how different textures work together. This trains your brain to recognize what makes your visuals compelling. So the more quality references you analyze consistently, the sharper your visual instincts become. The next step is modeling, and this is where most people go wrong. You need to think about how surfaces interact in real life. Always leave small gaps, even just one or two millimeters, between objects. This creates contact shadows that sell the realism. If you push geometry together, you lose these crucial shadows. Second, round your edges. Nothing in real life has perfect sharp 90 degree angles. You can do this in modeling or use round edge shaders. But be careful, if surfaces are too close together, the shader will blend materials and you will lose that contact shadow we just talked about. Another mistake, single plane walls, floors or ceilings. Give them at least 20 cm thickness, otherwise light leaks through the edges. And for repetitive elements like cabinet doors, assign different material IDs so you can control texture variation later. Have a look at this example with just one material ID. And with different IDs for each cabinet door. We will look into this in more detail a bit later, so stay tuned. Now, for the next step, before you even think about lighting, set up your environment. Replace the default grass with gravel textures. You don't want green light bleeding into your interior. The gravel textures usually are a middle gray that ties well for an interior shot. Add contacts with background planes using building textures. And you can just add a couple of trees to give some depth. You can find these images on textures.com, for example, they have plenty to choose from. But I also made a video showing you how you can do this yourself using AI. I'll leave the link up there and in the description below. Using these planes with textures is much more efficient than populating the exterior with heavy 3D models. And remember, it's really important to do this first before setting up your light, because they will change your interior lighting completely, creating shadows and different colors. Now, for lighting, I use HRI environments, or real skies as they are called in Lumion. These are 360 degree photos with all the lighting information baked in. As you can see, the mood changes completely depending on which HRI you choose. I get mine from Polyhaven, they are free and categorized by lighting conditions. For this project, I'm using this Dusk One HRI. I'll leave the link to it in the description below so you can follow along. So load the real skies effect and apply the downloaded HDRI. Rotate the sky so the sun is not entering the room. I want that indirect light. Now adjust the sky brightness property to let more light from the sky inside the room. And lower the background brightness to avoid having extreme halos on the windows. And one bonus tip. Always disable auto exposure from your camera settings. In my case, it's the color correction effect. You need consistent control over your lighting. And since we are here, adjust the exposure. This works similarly to a real camera. Even if you are in a low lit scenario, if you let more light into the sensor, you will get a brighter picture. So the same applies here. Increase the exposure to let more light in. You can also add contrast so the image doesn't look so washed out. And the rest you can keep by default. Here on top you can see the histogram. The histogram shows you brightness distribution. Keep it centered to avoid over or under exposure. Now materials are what makes your scene shine. 
But first, I start by placing colors on each surface to see how they interact and reflect onto each other. This will give you more clarity on your design's aesthetic. With everything set, we move to materials. PBA materials, to be more precise. Materials need multiple texture maps. Base color, normal for detail, roughness or gloss for shine, metalness for metal surfaces, and displacement for depth. One of the biggest advantages of using real-time applications like Lumion is that you can apply any material and see how it looks in real-time. You have thousands of options to choose from. Wood materials, marble, concrete, and all of these play an important role in your design. And even though they look great, I think you should use other material library sites that offer better resolution and, most importantly, are photographed from real products. This is again where I'll use Rearwood. It is different from other texture libraries. First, these aren't just random textures. They are digitized from actual manufactured catalogs. So when your client sees that marble or wood flooring in your render, they can actually go and buy the exact same product. They have over 5,500 materials that are scanned with professional flatbed systems that capture both color and surface structure with high accuracy. Plus, they work across all the major engines, from Corona to real-time ones like Lumion, Twinmotion or Enscape. They also have plugins for Blender, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D and SketchUp to make integration even smoother. And what if you can't find what you need? You can request specific materials from particular brands on their site. They have a free section to test things out, so use the first link in the description below to sign up. And when you are ready to upgrade, with code NUNU30, the first 300 users will get 30% off. So let's start by applying a material to my kitchen cabinet doors. I want to explore the metal options, so go to textures, then metal. In the genetic category, you will find this gold brushed material. Here you see how many credits it takes, the available resolution, and most importantly, the texture dimensions. In Lumion, you can apply these values exactly as they are here, so it's real texture scaling. This is really important if you want realism. An overscaled texture can completely ruin a perfect design. Let me show you how to apply this inside Lumion. First, go to Photo Mode, and then click this button to Build with Effects. This way we can see how the material will look like in the final render. Now in the material properties, you will find a slot called texture. Here you can load the color map. In the map scale property, let's set the value to 0.6, since Lumion uses meters for scaling. Then add the normal map, but pay attention, Lumion uses DirectX and these normal maps are done with OpenGL. So this means you need to invert the green channel for the correct light direction. Luckily, this is an easy fix. Just over the normal texture and now click these three vertical dots. Click the second icon that says flip green channel. Done. Next, we add the roughness and set this to 100% since we are working with texture maps. Load the resolutivity map, make it 100% and for the metalness, make it all the way to the right. And voila, you have your material almost ready. We can still make some changes to the color. I prefer to have a more saturated orange color, so I'll set the color here and on the texture property make it about 70%. This will blend the color I set with the color map. And if you found this tip helpful, give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and if you have any questions, the best place to ask me is in the comments below. I read all of them, so ask away. Now, to create that variation on different material IDs I mentioned earlier, you just need to copy and paste this material to the other cabinet doors and adjust their positions. You can do this in the UV coordinates. Now, let me show you another set of textures I used for the floor. So, for these wood planks, I applied these textures and used the same techniques as before, but I also added the displacement map. 
You can see before and after the displacement. It adds a bit of depth to the material. And don't just leave your material with wood plank cut in half. Choose at least one side to have the proper placement. A full plank on each side by adjusting the positions. These details play an important role in the final design. And I'll keep adding more materials to fit the scene. I'm highlighting here the ones I've used and their settings. When everything is perfectly aligned and pristine, it screams computer generated. Real life has imperfections and that's what sells realism. I've already added a couple of furniture pieces to my scene and I'll move objects slightly. Rotate shares a few degrees. Position items randomly. Add wear and tear, dust, stains, scratches. By using decals, these imperfections help to tell a story. Don't forget the details that matter. Cables, outlets, switches. Most people completely forgot this, but they are in every real space. And here's where you fix those sharp edges in your materials. Go to Advanced Settings and increase the Soften Edges. This creates subtle highlights that make a huge difference. By the way, some of the objects I've got here are from Rear Road as well. They have high quality assets from real brands. Remember, a poor low poly 3D model can ruin your design. And I often get 3D models from libraries such as this because it saves me time modeling a real piece of furniture. And being from a real brand, it's a big plus. When you are taking a new render, you are not just a 3D artist, you are a photographer. In each shot, you have to find the best angle to bring out the best in your design. There are three things you need to master. Focal length, exposure, and composition grids. Focal length is your angle of view. A lower value gives you a larger field of view, but with more distortion. I always like to show this example of how a character changes his face by going from 10 mm to 100 mm focal length. It's dramatic. The same applies to interior spaces. Using 10 mm will make your room look bigger and lets you show the whole space in just one shot, but doesn't look natural and you don't need to show everything at once. Lower focal lengths work great for small, tight spaces like bathrooms. Instead, use 35mm for a more natural perspective and take two or three renders showing different areas, each with a different focal length. You can use 50mm to 85mm for detailed shots with beautiful depth of field. Another important thing is to set the camera height between 1 to 1.6 meters. And there's one effect you should always add for high level shots. Two point perspective. This keeps your vertical lines parallel for a much better image. Don't use it for aerial shots though, it gets really distorted. Use composition grids. Place the most important elements along these lines for a better picture. Lumion has this built right in. In photo mode, head over to this icon and click to switch between different composition grids. Now you can move your camera and position these key elements along these lines for a much stronger image. And then you can define the spec ratio. Vertical shots work great for Instagram posts or stories and 16x9 for computer screens or billboards. With all your cameras set up, you are ready for the final step. But before that, if you want to take your renders to the next level, you can join my Lumion Render course. The link will be in the description below. This is where you add the final effects that make it look like a real photo. We are used to seeing things on screen from real cameras. And this, as with anything physical, have a lot of imperfections. To mimic these real-world cameras, you should add chromatic aberration. That color fringing around the edges that every lens has. Include lens flares that blow out highlights 
and lens dirt. And also add veneering. This is caused by the lens curvature. For wide angle shots, add slight fisheye distortion. In post, add 0.4 to 0.6 pixels of Gaussian blur. Renders are too sharp compared to real photos. I also upscale certain areas with AI and do final color correction, especially on greens, which are too saturated and bright. In reality, things are more towards the yellow. And next, add some sensor noise. All cameras have this, especially in low light scenarios. It looks a bit dirty, but it's real. After you follow all these steps, you should be able to have a render that looks like this. The secret isn't perfection, it's controlled imperfection. Every scratch, every slight misalignment, every surface flaw convinces the viewer they are looking at reality. If you want to dive deeper, I've created a complete video on what makes realistic renders. Check my next video up there, and remember, use the link below and the code NUNU30 for 30% off railroad assets. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, and I'll see you in the next one.